Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor and I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador and I'd like to take a look at Sony's new Alpha 6600 mirrorless camera. Now it's been nine years in the making and uh, Sony have been constantly refining the feature set and performance of this camera and this new Alpha 6600 comes at the top of the camera lineup in the APS-C cameras. Now it's been nearly three years since the announcement of the previous uh, top of the range which is the A65 camera and it's been widely anticipated for a couple of years now that there would be a new model. Now let's take a look at this camera in comparison to some of the other uh, cameras in their APS-C lineup and uh, this may be a camera that uh, brings you over uh, from either DSLRs or makes you want to upgrade your current mirrorless camera. It's a APS-C camera which is often referred to as a crop sensor camera. Now this uh, crop sensor does offer certain advantages and they're to do with size and weight. Uh, the cameras are ob obviously a little bit smaller than their full frame cameras and uh, we could possibly get an entire camera kit at under two and a half kilos in a small messenger bag. And obviously there's also a uh, cost saving there by not going up to the full frame cameras. Now we are going to lose out a little bit to the image quality of those full frame cameras but I actually think that uh, Sony have got a, a good balance between image quality and portability or size and weight of the gear. Now the camera is often a little bit smaller than some of the micro four thirds cameras which are using smaller sensors. So having that slightly larger sensor than the micro four thirds does give the Sony camera a little bit of an advantage in the performance or image quality stakes. Now let's take a look at the new body design. Now number one indicates that there used to be a pop-up flash there and now it's disappeared. We can still attach a flash via the multi-port shoe but we just don't have that really tiny little pop-up flash that to be honest I never used anyway. Uh, number two indicates that there's a larger grip there and that's um, concealing a much larger Z series batteries that we first saw released in the full frame cameras and that was a very welcome feature because most photographers can now go a full day of shooting without having to change a battery. I would still advise perhaps getting a, a spare backup battery just in case but most photographers won't actually use that. Number three indicates that we have two custom buttons on the tap of the camera and that is typically only seen on the previous top of the range uh, camera which was the A6500 camera. So um, let's take a look on the back of the camera. We have a, a new custom button, a C3 button on the back of the camera. Obviously the little button that popped up, the pop-up flash has disappeared so Sony haven't wasted that space. They've given us another custom button and I would typically use that AMF, the auto focus manual focus uh, button uh, which is also the AEL button if we move that toggle switch into the down position and often I would often assign two new custom features uh, for that one as well. So we have a total of five custom buttons on the top of the camera there and the, also, the little uh, trash can or bin uh, button on the bottom of the camera also doubles up as a custom button as well. Um, the tilt screen um, was obviously a very popular feature for the Alpha 6400 camera because that allows vloggers to film themselves and also people to do selfie shots. And on the side of the camera a welcome addition especially for the vloggers is going to be that headphone jack so we can monitor uh, the sound as well as recording uh, the sound from the microphone. Now one of the uh, complaints uh, for that um, flip up screen was that obviously if you mount a microphone on the multi-port shoe in the center of the camera that is going to be in the way of that screen. But of, co of course the market responded very quickly uh, to allow people to offset the microphone to one side. One of those companies was a company called Small Rig. Sony themselves also make a, a bracket that goes underneath the camera so you can offset the microphone to one side. So it's not a great issue to be honest. If you were looking for a Sony microphone that could either go on the multi-port shoe without having to use a lead that goes into the, um, the uh, microphone in jack, you could take a look at the ECM 
uh, XY ST1M, a bit of a mouthful there. Um, but all, that uh, microphone also has the added advantage of having a mic out uh, that allows you to attach a lead to go into the microphone input on the side of the camera. So of course we can offset the microphone if required. Now let's take a look at the uh, the body design. Obviously we've got that much bigger grip which is housing that larger Z series battery and if we flip the camera over you can see um, that uh, a snug fit for the battery. Uh, as you can see on the top of the camera that um, larger battery does lend itself to that larger grip so we can see that the uh, the body design has changed accordingly there and if we flip that over it's quite obvious which is the uh, the Alpha 6600. Uh, we're comparing it to the Alpha 6500 in the in these images, and again just a side by side comparison. Nothing um, major, but obviously that larger grip and the Z series batteries are major steps forward. I'm reminded of a song uh, called It's All About That Bass. Um, of course, for many users who uh, looked at uh, the great features of the Alpha 6400 but really didn't want to jump in because they wanted the in-body image stabilization or IBIS, then of course uh, they were hoping uh, this camera would appear. And of course, uh, this is the camera. It's got everything that the 6500 has, uh, everything the 6400 has, and a little bit more. Now, so a what I was quite keen uh, in getting my hands on this camera is really to push that side of it because I've already done an extensive review of the Alpha 6400 and of course that uh, this new camera has all of those uh, advantages and features so of course uh, I uh, set my alarm clock for an hour before dawn uh, got out uh, so when the ambient light is very low no tripod hand holding uh, on a range of different lenses. This is at a focal length of 54 millimeters. I think this was the uh, 18135, seven and a half times zoom. Nice sharp lens. Uh, it does have steady shots, but of course, uh, if I need to hand hold at these uh, low ambient conditions and keep the ISO low, then I'm going to have to drop that shutter speed quite significantly. This was actually captured at one quarter of a second um, you can see the city lights on in the distance. Um, it's in the low light of dawn. And I've had not had to raise the ISO more than 400 uh, in order to get this shot. And of course, it is handheld. Another example, the light's just a little bit uh, brighter now, but I want to keep that uh, ISO at um, absolutely the base level 100 ISO. And I'm managing to get a one sixth of a second on this 12 mil focal length. Now, of course, um, I am trying to keep the camera as steady as possible. If I can at all, uh, um, I will draw drop to one a knee and uh, use my elbow on that knee to try and brace the camera as carefully as possible. I'll typically take two or three shots because uh, even having in-body image stabilization, you're not absolutely guaranteed to get an ultra sharp image. But having said that, I, I did get uh, most of my shots pin sharp at these one sixth of a second shutter speeds with this ultra wide angle focal length. And now we are, we're using a much longer focal length, 113 millimeters here, and I'm managing to get sharp images at one eighth of a second. Now again, it's using a lens that has steady shot and the steady shot is on on the camera and also the lens and the two steady shots talk to each other to give you the maximum benefit. Of course, this does allow some photographers just to leave the tripod at home because these are very low light conditions that I'm getting these shots and that's probably where the A6400, as good a camera as it is, uh, you might struggle to get so many pin sharp um, shots with such low ISOs in these conditions. Now I did uh, lower the shutter speed slower than I normally would uh, for this wildlife shot. This is using the 70-200 f4G lens and uh, I'm at the widest aperture and I've had to raise the ISO to 1000 here because the, the ambient conditions are still uh, very low on the, on the level of light here. Now I don't want to go too slow because um, it might, uh, I might be able to go slower uh, with the shutter speed with the steady shot but of course um, the wildlife might move and then I risk getting a blurry shot. In this instance I got the, the, the pin sharp shot at 1 125th of a second of this uh, baby fairy penguin here. 
Um, again, uh, one of the advantages of having uh, steady shot inside the IBIS is that some lenses that we use, they don't have steady shot uh, built into the lens. And this is one such example. I'm using the FE 85 1.8. It's, uh, it's a full frame lens and designed for the full frame cameras. Uh, Sony decide to leave the steady shot off because all of those full frame cameras now have steady shot inside. But of course, uh, using that on a APS-C camera without steady shot, I probably wouldn't have got this shot because I've dropped the shutter speed to 1 20th of a second and that's an 85mm lens so that's a 135 equivalent. Um, the camera probably would have thought I needed 1 1 60th to reliably get a sharp image but we've gone way below and that does allow me to keep that ISO very low again. So uh, that is the joy of IBIS is we can uh, leave the uh, tripod pot at home. In most instances, unless we want to use ND filters and get smooth water, we can shoot in very low ambient light. Most of these shots you've been uh, looking at don't uh, have the sun yet risen, um, so they're after sunset or before sunrise shots. Of course, um, if you looked at my Alpha 6400 review, you know uh, one of the, well, the best feature of that camera was the replacement of lock-on AF to AF tracking. These cameras now use additional algorithms to track the subject. These images were ap actually captured uh, with the A6400 camera, but uh, the new uh, Alpha 6600 has that same AF tracking. And what that does is uh, basically it uses those additional algorithms algorithms. So if the camera had been tracking using the real-time IF, if the eye momentarily uh, be became um, uh, uh, invisible, basically it was obscured in this case by the hip-hop dancer's arm, it doesn't jump to the nearest subject matter, the arm, it's using distances and texture as two algorithms and so it stays at the same distance and pulls up a little bit of the texture that was adjacent to um, that eye. So a very reliable feature. Uh, I've shot thousands of portraits at demonstrations and parades with the Alpha 6400 and found that to be a, a really reliable AF tracking system. Um, here in this instance again shot with the 6400 but I have to say the 6600 um, shows every sign of being as reliable. Um, somebody walks in front of me at a parade the face and eye are concealed from view momentarily and the camera doesn't jump to the person walking in front of the camera, it stays with the subject and in this case the only part of the face that is visible is the ear. Um, amazing, amazing tracking capabilities of these new alpha cameras. And so um, and the, the, the great thing about this real-time tracking is it's also available in movie mode as well. So typically we used to have to use center lock-on uh, AF if we wanted to track thing in movies and uh, that was well, was useful but it was very twitchy and could jump away from the subject uh, when it got confused. Uh, the real-time tracking, the AF tracking in the movie mode now is much more reliable. And one of the features is um, if we if set up in movie mode to use continuous AF and the AF tracking. Now, uh, if we touch the screen with the, with the touch operation enabled, that stops the continuous autofocus and pulls focus on that spot that we touched. So we can pull focus from different uh, subjects in the screen. We can also uh, dive into the menu and change that to touch tracking. And that is a way of just touching the subject and then having the camera follow that subject around the screen and this can work in movie mode or in stills and so that is a very compelling new feature and uh, the great thing about this um, this feature now is we can also use IAF in movie making and so that is available in HD and also 4k movies and uh, again, one of the new um, uh, IAF features is the fact that we can uh, change from human IAF to animal IAF. Now, I would advocate you put this feature, the subject detection, into the FN menu. So when you're switching from shooting people to shooting animals, you can just switch that subject over from animal uh, to human or vice versa. 
Now I did uh, test the camera, I only had the camera for a brief amount of time but I tested the focus tracking and uh, uh, probably what I would do instead of using wide as the default now I would simply um, uh, program my memory preset for action to use AF tracking wide and obviously we can come down to zone or spot if need be and one of the great features about um, this uh, new Alpha 6600 is that um, dull grey focus area that we used to have to rely on is now a bright white focus area particularly useful if we're using the spot AF a lot of people used to complain that they couldn't find where the spot AF point was and that's no longer going to be a problem because Sony have decided uh, to make that bright white on this camera and uh, if you are tracking subjects this was a sequence of shots that I captured of this dog running towards me with the Alpha 6600 I was using the FE 70-200 f4G lens to do this tracking uh, test and uh, if the camera has found the subject then the tracking icon will um, uh, jump from uh, the number of little d uh, green squares into this uh, AF tracking icon here and you can see that will faithfully track with the subject as you're panning the camera. Okay, if you've got a little bit more time to spare, I've covered the main advantages, but I'll go through in, in a little bit more detail if you've got the time to bear with me. And that is, um, let's look at the um, performance features above and beyond the Alpha 6400. A lot of people were very impressed with that camera, but just wanted to wait for the next one. Okay, and obviously that is rewarded by that Z series battery and bigger grip, the in body image stabilization, the IAF in movies, both. HD and 4K, the headphone jack on the uh, side of the camera so we can monitor the sound as we're recording, the bright white focus frame, the buffer capacity is obviously larger than the 6400 camera which is very useful because it's not that UHS-2 which will clear the buffer uh, more quickly that we saw on the full frame cameras. We have an additional C3 button on the back of the camera um, one of the downsides if you were using that pop-up flash is that pop-up flash now has disappeared. Uh, we have 1 and 2 on the memories on the shoot mode dial instead of the MR. Uh, I actually didn't mind the MR on the uh, Alpha 6400 when we did have the advantage of 3 memories stored on the camera rather than 2 on the A uh, Alpha 6600 camera. Pre-AF it's a small point but pre-AF uh, was strangely on uh, by default on the a6400 which is great for selfies and vlogging not so good for people shooting fast action uh, because you don't really want the camera to lock on to something uh, before you've given it permission to lock on so if you are doing selfies or vlogging you might want to go into the menus and just switch that on uh, just for that um, uh, um, feature for people updating from older APS-C cameras uh, such as the 6000, 6300 and Alpha 6500 cameras we do have a, a, a quite a few upgrade features here. One includes that tiltable screen um, so you can do selfies and the vlogging. We have AF tracking and touch tracking, real-time IAF so we don't have to hold a custom key down now while accessing IAF in continuous autofocus. We have subject detection which I've discussed between animals and humans. We have interval shoot function um, so this uh, replaces the need to use a time-lapse uh, app because the app features are now gone on these recent model alpha cameras. So the, uh, the interval timer allows us to shoot stills and then make the time-lapse movie in post-production or alternatively we could have the camera make the time-lapse movie by using the S and Q uh, feature on the shoot mode dial that stands for slow and quick. We can um, register different focus points, spot focus points, uh, whether the camera is in vertical or horizontal modes. Very useful if you're shooting, uh, doing a portrait session and you're switching quickly between horizontal and vertical. We have a shutter auto white balance lock so that when we start shooting a sequence of images we can tell the camera not to vary the white balance during that sequence. Uh, we've got a self portrait timer so that when we press the shutter release we'll get a, a visible three um, countdown. Three, two, one gives many people time to pout or smile. Uh, we have a movie with shutter feature so we don't have to press the little red button on the side of the camera. We can just have uh, 
use the shutter release button instead, uh, which is much more, uh, much easier to implement in my opinion. It doesn't stop you there, or, but you know, wait, there's more. Uh, we have an additional uh, blue peaking color, uh, which is uh, might be useful for some people shooting movies. So we can see where the uh, sharp focus is. That is typically only seen in manual focus and DMF. Uh, we've got the 30 minute uh, movie limit has been removed. Uh, we saw that first appear on the Alpha 6400 camera and now the new Alpha 6600 is no longer restricted into 30 minute movies. Uh, this camera can also access the new Sony's new Bluetooth remote. Uh, this remote doesn't rely on infrared signals or a wire. We can actually just use the Bluetooth. We will need to pair that with the camera first, um, but that uh, is by far and away the best remote to use with this camera. We have um, the ability uh, when reviewing the images, it will just jump straight uh, to the focus point. When we're reviewing a magnified view, we quickly know where the camera did uh, focus because it will jump straight to that point. We have the slow and quick on the shoot mode dial. This allows us to shoot at movies in one frame per second uh, or um, 100, 120 frames per second for shooting slow motion movies. We have the My Menu and My Dial settings. Obviously on this APS-C camera, we don't have a front dial, we only have a rear dial, but you can set up a custom key and we've got lots of them just to switch the functionality of that rear wheel. Uh, for instance, one of the things that I do is I'll just press the uh, a custom key once and then the um, the rear wheel which might be set up to change apertures suddenly now becomes an exposure compensation dial so I don't feel the loss of that front deal, dial personally uh, we have a new aspect ratio which is a 1-1 if you're a raw shooter it won't uh, crop the raw file it just uh, masks the raw file to help us frame the image up in in uh, in camera if you're shooting in jpegs obviously we will create a square jpeg image um, we have the ability to limit the focus areas as well so we don't have to cycle through the the numerous focus areas to get to the one that we want we if there's six or eight focus areas we typically don't use we can just hide them from view so cycling through the focus areas now is a lot faster. So that's uh, my preview of the new Alpha 6600 camera. Uh, certainly, um, maybe it was the camera you were waiting for. Maybe you're going to hold out for the next one. Uh, but this is quite a, um, a leap forward uh, for people who were waiting. And certainly, um, this will be the camera for many users to jump on board with. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, just remember uh, I do support the Alpha community. Um, head over to my website, www.markgaylor.com. All of my support materials for the Alpha cameras, which includes ebooks for the latest model cameras, can be downloaded for free. I also have Photoshop Actions, Lightroom presets, and many more ebooks as well to download. So uh, give me the thumbs up, um, uh, put some comments down so I can uh, reply to your questions. Also remember that uh, you, know, you can join uh, my, uh, my YouTube channel, become a paid member for a few dollars a month. I will give you a live a one hour seminar each month. I have a priority uh, question and answer forum and I have a photo critique service. Okay, so uh, consider that. That's um, that's useful if, you, if you're going to be the sort of alpha user who has ongoing questions. I'm prepared to be your alpha consultant. Okay, so that uh, concludes my um, Alpha 6600 review. I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Imaging Ambassador.